Ladies and gentlemen, we got Cal Molinay <laughs> on the line. How are you doing, Cal? Hello, Ben. How are you? It's so nice to talk to you. I really enjoyed talking to you. We had a chat earlier this week, didn't we? And um, you're one of the few people that actually makes me feel positive and inspired <laughs> about, about the possibilities for the future of the world. You know what I mean? Because stuff is so negative, you know, and there was there was one point where I was feeling a bit dragged down, you know, by the negativity of all the governments and the wars and the police and stuff. But I really like the way you look at things. So, Cal, is it possible for us to make the world a better place? Yes, 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 uh, absolutely. And uh, we don't have to wait, right? We don't have to kind of wait... Uh... For something to happen, you know, we can start doing it ourselves. You know, this whole voting thing, this whole thing, waiting every four years to start doing something. I mean, that's apathy. You know, spending a couple of hours every four years looking for parking, waiting in line, and then choosing your safe slave master, that's apathy, right? Yeah. To kind of push it off every four years, you know, like politicians do. You know, they put off uh, the next pro problem to the next politician once they're out of office, you know? Yeah. That's just, that just delays the inevitable. That makes the problem grow worse. You know, that makes it um, the situation worsen. Um, and if we really want freedom in our lifetime, then we kind of have to start doing it now, right? Not, but at the same time, realize this is a, uh, which is why doing it this way, like the way we do it to liberate our VA, it's, it's uh, also a revolution of convenience, right? When you have a time, when you have a moment, when you have, uh, you know, an hour, you know, well, you know, in one week or something like that. But eventually, when you have a lot of different people doing that at the same time, all those hours will accumulate, right. you know? There, there doesn't have, there's no set time or date for any of this, you know? Um, of course, before, like, I guess, investing yourself to go out there and start talking to people, make sure things in your own life, it's, it's, everything's good there, too. You know, you don't want that extra added stress because, um, I don't know, I, I feel that people can see that. People can read that, you know. Right. So, of course, like, if you're going to go out there and talk about freedom and anarchy and this is what it will look like without the state, you can't really do that by, like, being angry because mm -hmm. now you're showing them what anarchy looks like. Anarchy looks, like, very stressful. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Um, and the only reason I feel that it's been kind of stressful is because a lot of the ways a lot of people talk about this stuff is by um, putting people down, right? Like, when are you going to wake up, you know, this whole kind of shaking them sort of stuff, you know, throttling them, you know? Um, and I feel like, I guess in the same way that you don't talk to children, you don't, you don't um, mock children, you don't insult children, uh, that's on a, that same kind of principle, you know, when you want to help them understand something, you know? You don't put them down because they don't understand. The same principle we, we have to kind of still apply to adults, right? Um, we have to remember that the only reason we ever get into arguments is just to get to a better place, right? Not to continue to put more fire in the wood, no, more, more wood in the fire, I mean, right? Um, that's where I want to go, right? I want to get to a better place. That's the only reason why we sort of argue. That's the only reason why we sort of continue to have these, these discussions. Um, but yelling at each other, you know, these marching protests, um, and none of that stuff is going to work. It's so just preaching to the choir. You're not inviting new people in, you know? Um, I mean, the environment is also very important with this sort of stuff, too. Um, it's easier to talk to people in the, you know, in the comfort of your own home. You know, this is a freedom movement that can take place anywhere, at a cafe, on a sidewalk, you know. Um, the state can never stop us from just simply talking to one another. Right. Now, let's presume there's people listening from all over the world. Let's presume they're not familiar with anarchism and, and that type of thing. So just give us an introduction about Liberate RVA and tell us about the activism and the things you've been doing recently. Um, all right, so it's, it's very simple. It's a very easy template. There's, um, there's, there's this really one thing, one, one easy thing to do is just really to just start talking about these things to other people. I feel we've kind of forgotten how to talk to each other, you know? We, we have we've forgotten to just kind of talk about these uh, important, you know, discussions and such. Um, you know, the, the forums of the old, you know, are kind of gone. You know, there used to be like these, uh, the agros, right? The places where you can kind of philosoph you know, philosophize and stuff like that, especially in Europe. Um, there are bars or saloons that people went out there to go talk about this stuff, but that stuff is kind of gone. Um, of course, you hear this uh, loss of emphasis on philosophy because they don't want people to share that love of wisdom. They don't want people to continue having these discussions. They'd rather people keep an eye out on each other. Any one of us could be a potential terrorist, you know? That the only thing that's keeping you and me safe from each other, from each other's throat, are laws. It's a state, you know? It's, um, and it's that culture of being born into. We're born into the matrix. So, of course, we're going to be born into believing that we can't uh, have a community. Right, that we can't, uh, you know, that 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 everyone's a secret Dexter Morgan or something, you know, um, and then to realize that uh, that's that's not the case. That's not true. Um, I've talked to 
I've talked to about over 200 people now, I guess at BCO alone, and everybody agrees when I ask them the questions, you know, um, in your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve problems? And everyone agrees, no, absolutely not, right? And then we define violence as uh, placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. And everyone says, yeah, yeah, okay, I agree, you know, like boxing. Uh, before we box, let's agree with the rules. Nothing below the waist, no ear biting Mike Tyson, and then we can box, right? right. And so this, and everybody agrees. The second question is, um, with the exception of self-defense, of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? And everyone says, oh, yeah, absolutely. And say, so, oh, all right, we're almost there then, because self-defense is not violence, that's self-preservation. You have a right to protect yourself. You have a right to stand up for yourself. Property rights begins with self-ownership and to stand up for those that can't, right? Especially for children. They're people too, right? And then the third question would be, uh, would you consider it wrong and immoral to, to violently force your ideas onto other people? Harold, just slow down for us. Would you think it, do you think it was, what, what was it, just say it again, that last one? To be wrong and immoral, to violently force your ideas onto other people. Right. And, uh, and everyone agrees. Um, and those three same questions, they're, they're, they're the same questions. There's just three different ways to phrase that. So you ask people this? You ask people this on the street, do you? Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have my little sign that says, ask me how voting is immoral. That's mostly to, to invite the question, to invite the conversation. Right. I'm not uh, mad at their throat. I'm not uh, yelling at anybody. I'm not, you know, putting my middle finger up because they don't get it or anything like that. You kind of want to... Um, Invite the question. You know, if you invite the question out of curiosity or even out of humor, at least their defenses are down. Right. right? So let's do it now. Let's do it. So let's say I'm a member of the public and I'm going to ask you, what was it? Why is voting immoral? All right. How, how is voting immoral? Okay. So let's start off with those three questions. I say, well, I'm going to ask you three questions and then we're going to talk about the hidden violence behind voting in the state. Right. And day to day life to use violence to solve problems. Now, slow down for us, Cal. Like you're, you're going twice the speed of me. Just so do we <laughs> do we use violence to solve our, in my day to day life? No, I don't No. And the question is not have you ever. OK. Right? The question is in your day to day life. Right. right? Um, you may get angry. You may break your own things. You may um, yell. But those are outlets of aggression. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so in your day to day life, you don't use violence to solve problems. Right. And with the exception of self-defense, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence onto others? Yeah, I'd consider it wrong and immoral to initiate violence onto others. Yeah, except self-defense, yeah. Right, yeah. And then uh, the third question would be, would you consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Yeah, I'd consider it wrong and immoral to force my ideas onto other people, yeah. Right, so there we have it. You just told me, in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions that you apply and use, mm. right? And every single person I've talked to always answers the same way. Sure. We all have these values. We're all are born anarchists. Even though we're born into the matrix, we're not born evil. Right? So, so understanding that, you know, as a community of individual people in our, in our own society, in our own cities, you know, we also want to solve problems too. But the government says that the only way we can solve problems is through voting. Right? So people vote with their ideas to solve problems. And in effect, they elect a politician. That politician, their only job is to legislate those laws, those ideas into laws, mm. right? Those laws of ideas are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint, mm. right? And if it's at any point you refuse, and if it's at any point you resist or don't agree with those ideas, you're shot or, or well, you're injured. You're, you're sometimes shot, you know, if you try to escape, right? And that's the hidden violence behind voting. That's the hidden violence behind the state because the state only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way. And that's their violence versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that we already apply in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Mm -hmm. State is also even funded through more violence because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have a choice. You have to give me your property. You have to give me your money. You have to give me your taxes, mm -hmm. right? So if you make, because if you did have a freedom of choice, they wouldn't threaten you with another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? If they could send Wesley Snipes to jail for not paying his taxes, they could certainly send anyone else to jail. Mm -hmm. That's the hidden violence behind the matrix, that's the hidden violence behind statism, and that's the hidden violence behind politics. Um, so looking at the state as really is just a system of violence that's even founded on violence, that all it knows how to solve any problems is through violence. And the opposite of that would be anarchism, right? The opposite of, uh, I guess, violence is nonviolence, right? The opposite of coercion is voluntarism, right? Uh, evil and good, right? This is not a matter of opinion. This is, this is, this is true. Um, this is, uh, you know, while you're out, when people are out there talking about, you know, well, whether we either, we should raise more taxes or we should have this law. It's like, oh, you know what? There's a lot of people still suffering. There's a lot of people still rotting away in cages because of those choices, because you're, you know, sitting on your ass every four years trying to figure out, you know, what we're going to do. Who are you going to vote for? 
You know, that's not going to free our brothers and sisters. That's not going to free the other human beings who are still rotting in cages, in state cages. Mm. You know, the country is finally number one at something, and that's enslaving its own people, dehumanizing its own people. Um, so that's that's so that's really the hidden bias. That's usually the, the approach I take, you know, the, the introduction. And so when I go out there and talk to people, I'm not saying, like, I have to convince you. You don't have to convince anyone right away. You just need to start the conversation. You're just planting those seeds, mm. right? Just planting those ideas. Um, and then that's it. That's all you have to do. And along the way, I mean, of course, like once you see the matrix, once you start seeing more and more of the matrix, you really can't look back like values. Once you push these values forward, they never go back. You know, uh, like Stefan says, once um, once we've all become um, abolitionists, eventually that meaning and term goes away. Right. But once we've all become anarchists, once we've all become freedom activists, eventually that term and meaning will go away, too. Right. So once you see the matrix, once you push those values forward, they never go backwards. Once people see the matrix, right, for what it really is, it, it, that never goes back. You can't plug yourself back into the matrix, right? Like cycle. You have to kind of forget your, you know, forget about everything. Forget about love. Forget about compassion. Forget about understanding and patience. Um, forget about what uh, freedom could look like, right? To just go right, right ahead and plug yourself back into the matrix. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that you can't. Uh, and the government knows that the best way to prevent you from wanting to unplug is just to hide the violence from you, right? You saw the violence from like Vietnam that came back during the 60s. You know, people saw this on television screens, but you don't see that anymore, right? In Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, it's hard now to even videotape the violence that the, that the forced monopolized police service has forced upon us. We can't, we're not even allowed to record that, you know? They, they've gotten, the political machine has gotten so good at hiding the violence because they know that if we see that violence, we would react. Mm. There'll yeah. be charges overturned and all this other stuff. You know, there'll be people like a lot of anti-authority people out there. Um, so that's uh, so that I guess that's that's really the approach I take. It's just to just start these conversations to to bring everything. I guess me personally, that I've been um, learning and reading about anarcho-capitalism, about the free market, about the non-aggression principle, like. Um, to your show, listening uh, to Stefan Molyneux's Free Domain radio show and just uh, taking all that stuff and just actually applying it um, to kind of get off from behind my computer and actually go out there and start talking to people about this stuff, right? Um, but it really starts, again, with, with ourselves, right? To self-knowledge, to, to keep learning, to, to understand what, uh, what's really going on, right? Um, and then from there, it starts at home, you know, with your family and friends. Have these discussions with them. And then when you're ready, start having these discussions with strangers, right? Start having these discussions with your fellow human beings, you know, the people in your community. Um, you know, don't focus on the police. Police will come last, right? Focus on the people immediately who are not that far, you know, gone into the statism, right? Uh, focus on those people first. There's, um, so I guess the way we look at Liberate RVA, the way we do this... Uh, method of rhetoric is really as um, like an anarcho business plan, right? There's a market of people that are already fed up with the government. Mm. They kind of know this, there's something wrong with the government. You know, they're the ones who say, you know, we can still fix it. Well, you're acknowledging that there's something wrong with it to begin with, right? right. So, I mean, you can look at like the electoral college, you can look at a lot of different issues. But the thing is to, to first, that's the market right there, right? Those people who understand that there's something wrong with the government, there's something wrong with the society that we live in, that's the market that we have to reach out to. There's already a vast majority of people in this country alone that don't vote, right? So all we have to do now is just change the reason for why they don't vote, you know? The reason for saying, I don't vote because of the electoral cause or because of yada, 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 because it doesn't do anything. They say now, I don't vote because it's immoral, because it's wrong to force your ideas onto other people, because I'm an anarchist, right? And that's the line that you draw. That's the moral line that all of us draw in our own community, you know, when we're all united across that line. Um, and that moral line will reach out to all the other communities. Like right now, there's a Liberate Rochester, Liberate uh, Newcastle and Delaware, Liberate Rally, Liberate Bemidji in Minnesota. Um, and that moral line will stretch all across the country, right? And where are you going to go? And they'll say, oh, fuck Richmond. Oh, wait, you know, I'm going to go to New York. Oh, shit, there's one up there, too. Like, where are you going to go? Right. Right. Well, Hold on a second. Just tell us about this liberate thing, because there might be people listening that don't know about it. So, what what's liberate? What does that mean? All right. So, liberate. It's just the um, it's just a freedom movement, right? If you're going to be an anarchist, if you're going to say state violence is wrong, you have to kind of go all the way with that. You can't make exceptions. You can't say, well, state violence is wrong, and we have to end that. But the violence we do to each other is okay. The violence we do to children is okay, right? You kind of have to say, you know. 
you can't make you can't make exceptions. When you make exceptions, you let uh, you let the movement, you let uh, those arguments open for trolls, pretty much, right? Uh, we're always looking for like little weak spots, different wedges, and exceptions leads to more exceptions. Violence gets more violence, and there's no exceptions to freedoms. Mm -hmm. I don't want one freedom. I want all my freedoms back. You know, we're born free. We're not born slaves, right? And and to to vote for our freedoms back doesn't make any sense. Right, this whole idea, like maybe tomorrow we can smoke marijuana. So fucking what? I don't want one freedom back. Right? How many more freedoms did we lose in the meanwhile? How long did that take? Decades. That is not a measure of success. I'm going to be like 80 years old, dying, you know, in, in a prison in this cage, and my children are going to be born into this. Right? And so really, it's just to, again, just let go. Let go of politics. Let go of the government. Let go of the idea that violence is going to set us free. And this freedom movement is just to liberate our community from that idea to break those bonds. Um, our symbol is a uh, bolt cutter. So I'm um, pretty much to, to use uh, the bolt cutters of philosophy um, to go out there and start, you know, breaking the, the cult and culture, you know, um, to start uh, philosophizing with each other, to start talking about these discussions. And that's really what this freedom movement is all about. It's, uh, it's a way that anyone can be a part of it. There's no risk of arrest. There's no risk for injury. There's no risk for, for being murdered or shot by the state because we're not out there. We're not about protests. We're really just about quality conversations. We're really about one-on-one. -on -one. We're really about talking to each other. Um, that's the freedom movement that I want to be a part of. You know, I don't want to be this whole, <laughs> this whole thing about like, let's get rid of one politician. Let's get rid of one cop. Like, so what? They'll just replace them, yeah. right? Like, man right so what if you get rid of five bad guys they'll just replace them with another five more bad guys you know what you should have done what batman should have done is just gone to his own community and turn them all into superheroes instead right that's what we were saying the other day wasn't it instead of trying to beat the bad guys create more superheroes eventually you can even turn the bad guys into your side too yeah. eventually the cops will come join us eventually they'll you know oh shit you know my wife my my daughter my my friend they're part of liberal IVA. and in the end it's like what the fuck have i been doing yeah yeah uh, so this is really just about uniting. Uh, Liberate RV is about uniting our community with shared values, pushing those values forward to unite all our issues together. Yeah. Right? One single issue about the, what's wrong with the government, what's wrong in society, is not going to do it alone. But if we unite all these issues together, if we unite all these values together for equality, for nonviolence, for freedom, we can go so, so far. Right? I mean, um, we, we, we don't have to wait for anyone to do it for us. We don't have to wait for a government. We can do it ourselves. You know? You can, you can uh, for, for example, like agorism, right? Um, this whole thing of trying to opt out of the government, right? They're not, uh, they're ways that, uh, they're, I guess, counter-economics, right, by definition. Right. So, I mean, if, if that's, if that's the, if that's the um, I guess, the purpose of it, right? You don't want to give your money to the government in any way possible because, you know, that's going to be funding violence. That's, you know, the government is a system of violence, and that's what they're going to use their money with. Right to fund a lot of this other stuff, a lot of other immoral acts and services, um, but that's only one part of the equation, though. Right? We're not interested in starving the beast. Right? We're interested in killing the beast. Hmm. And the only way to kill the beast, the only way to uproot statism, is to go at all violence in your community, not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other, the violence we do to children. Right? The violence we do to children, like spanking. That's that's where this stuff grows. Right? Spanking only teaches children one thing: that violence is a way to solve problems right so no wonder of course they're going to adopt statism no wonder of course they're going to you know accept voting no wonder they're of course they're going to accept politicians because that's all they've learned that's all they've known that's what they're up with that's what they were born into um so agorism and all this stuff th these are one part of the equation the other part of the equation just is push those values forward too with agorism with all these different ways that we have to try to um people want to minimize the state but remember we're, we're not just interested in minimizing it we're interested in ending it, right? We're not interested in prolonging it. We're not interested in band-aid solutions. Right? Um, so that's, uh, I guess, to, to combine agorism, you can combine, I guess, Julian nullification, you combine a lot of these other practices, but all of these other practices are not going to get as far if we don't push these values in there as well. Like um, businesses, for example. Uh, it's the first time ever in the, like, in the history businesses are starting to adopt values. Uh, you can look at J.C. Penney, you can look at um, uh, Starbucks, right? Their, their values are now saying you should be able to get married regardless of your gender, right? See? Oh, so corporations are starting to express moral views as a way of winning customers, right? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes, yes. So that's the first time. Well, so that's the first time uh, this chair fell. That values are being pushed forward. Let me grab another chair. Sure. <laughs> I 
Oh, I see. So, well, that's really great, isn't it? Because their morality and ethics becomes profitable as a as a, as a business plan, right? Right. So Starbucks is saying we believe in the non-aggression principle, and then the next coffee chain is needs to compete, you know, in order to so. That's the, that's the key. That's why this is part of the anarcho-capitalist business plan, because this also involves uniting businesses, not corporations. This is a non-political movement. Mm. So any business, of course, that advocates for politics can be a part of it until they let go of politics, right? But at the same time, but they can still adopt values, mm. right? So, of course, uh, you look at Chick-fil-A, for example. A couple months ago, they were um, funding and lobbying um, I guess, political organizations to prevent people from getting closer, you know, gay marriage. They were preventing that. They were advocating against it. And pretty much they're, they crossed that moral line. I mean, you can, you can be homophobic. You can be racist. You can be sexist, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't have to be your friend. I don't have to talk to you. But the moment you start forcing those ideas onto other people, that's where you have a problem, mm. right? That's where the, uh, the founder of Chick-fil-A had a problem. He started to use his own money instead of his business's money. Because now the moment you use your, own, your business money, now it makes it look like your business adopted these values now too. And of course it makes the Chick-fil-A look like they're, uh, they're homophobic, they're, they're anti-gay, they're, they fund hate groups. And until recently this past week, you know, he came out and said, well, uh, my bad, you know, we're not going to fund those groups anymore and how to change the heart. But to be honest, again, like I was telling you the other day, it's like I, 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 could, I could care less what kind of succulent bullshit that guy has to say. I'm more interested in hearing what his financial advisors have to say, right? They're not a nonprofit organization, mm. right? Uh, the bottom line is making profit, and they're losing profit because uh, when that news story broke out, so many people all over the country were socially ostracizing that business. They were, ex they were exercising their freedom of disassociation, mm. right? If we all have these values... Right. If any bigoted, I guess, business comes into our town, all we have to do is just opt out and mass say, mm. right, all of us together. And that business will go bankrupt in a week. Right. Yeah. So, this is why democracy is the true freedom. In a, uh, Sorry. Hang on, but no, let me start that again. This is why capitalism is the true democracy, so to speak, in the sense that you vote with your money. Right. You choose where to allocate your resources. Uh, right. Are you following me? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I guess I would want to um, to re re kind of replace voting. Voting has a really tarnished name, anyways. Now you know it's yeah. kind of kind of get rid of um, news speak and we kind of replace it with freedom speak. You know, um, so I mean, of course, there's this, there's the difference between voting. There's also consensus, right? You know, who, there are pretty much consensus of opinions. You know, hey, you know, um, vote for which one's more popular. Vote for your favorite candy. All this stuff. But there's just really just tally marks of consensus. Mm. Uh, and that doesn't really bother anyone. If I don't participate in that game, if I don't participate in, in that contest, it doesn't affect me, mm. right? However, with voting, if I don't participate in that game, that still affects me. Right. I don't want to have anything to do with that. Even if I don't want to participate or play or I want to uh, acknowledge it, mm. right? Those ideas are still forced upon me even if I don't want to be a part of it, mm. right? So I guess that's... It's interesting, I guess, um, with the Aurelian age that we're in right now, so it's kind of important to kind of fight back with our own media. Kind of important to fight back with their own new uh, freedom speak words, um, like the holidays, like the freedom holidays. We celebrated Agorism Day um, in place of Labor Day. Uh, that's uh, so. I mean, our own way of uh, appropriating status holidays. Uh, I guess, like much in the same way that Christianity appropriated pagan holidays, this is our way to appropriate our own holidays. Yeah. Right. Eventually, a year from now, we're going to have our own freedom calendar. Right. Cal, tell us about the event that you had last night. What was that? Okay, that was uh, so that's a freedom gathering. So like a lot of the stuff, I guess, when you go out there, when I go out there and talk to people about these uh, about these issues, about these uh, topics and conversations out there, um, a, a big part of it, I feel, is to also draw in that conversation. You know, just to have a place um, to continue having these uh, these questions. And you know, people are still going to have questions after you have that conversation. So the Freedom Gathering is just, just that, just a place that we all can get together and start talking about these issues together. Yeah. Uh, freedom Gatherings are just, um, you know, when I go out there to talk to people, pass them a flyer. It's like, hey, we're also having a Freedom Gathering like two weeks from. You should come, you have more questions. You know, yeah. the Freedom Gathering, so, um, and it could take place anywhere. It doesn't have to be a house, it could be a park. Um, it, for us, it takes place at a different places, uh, like the Maplewood Anarchy Garden. <laughs> yeah. But, PR because there's nothing negative or psychologically um, bad about a garden, right? You think healthy productivity, you think green, um, unless you're allergic to tomatoes or something like that. But if you put anarchy and garden together, you know, 
part of the PR campaign is to kind of overturn this um, mainstream media thought of what anarchism is. So, I don't know, so there's nothing threatening about that. So it helps invite more curious people, helps invite future anarchists into the movement. So, so at these events, are they like seminars or are they parties? Is it social or do you give talks or both or what? Yeah, so uh, yeah, pretty much a mix of everything. So, of course, uh, you want to make it fun. I mean, th these are serious issues. These are serious topics that we're talking about. These are um, radical, I guess, uh, for a lot of, in a lot of people's minds. So uh, we, we want to make it fun. You know, we, we start off with the potluck, and after that we have our philosophical discussions. Uh, so last night we started off with um, one of Stefan Molyneux's videos, the one that got over a million hits, you know, uh, I think um, truth about statism or something like that, um, or no, th to see the farm sort of stuff. Right, was, the, 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 about your enslavement, the truth about the, the tax farm thing. Right. Yeah, right. so we, we watched that and then after that we, we started talking about this stuff. We started talking about the issues that are important to us. Uh, there was like 25 people there, there was, there was a lot of people. Uh, we eventually were going to have to start looking for bigger venues for this. And then after that we had our uh, freedom party. After that we have our... Um, uh, musicians come in there and play. We had the um, like Alberto who was coming there. He, he's a he's a classical guitarist uh, musician. He's he's a really cool guy. He's a fun guy. He can pretty much play anything he puts his hands on. And then there's uh, the Party Liberation Front were there too. There are fire spinners, fire mancers. Um, again, to make it to make it fun too, right? To show what anarchism really is, right? It's not uh, this boring you know philosophical essay. You know, it's not. Uh, I mean, and for me, I, I love that stuff. But for most people, you know. Um, they're not, uh, I mean, for the layman, you know, they, they kind of have to read through a lot of this stuff to find and grasp and understand this stuff. We kind of have to kind of create, I guess, a lot of imaginative, uh, creative ways to reach out to the layman, to reach out to the people who are still plugged into the matrix, to, to help find ways to make them understand this, right? We can always show them the door. We can always show them the pill, right? It's up to them to finally say, you know what? All right, I'm taking the red pill. You know, it's up to them. There's no pressure, right? So that's why there's no insulting. There's no mocking people. On their own, they'll come out and say, you know what? I'm an anarchist too. I'm an anarcho-capitalist, right? No pressure. And uh, using that kind of method of rhetoric, uh, it's, it's actually, um, it's, we've been growing. We've been growing a lot. We've been growing uh, tremendously. I think next year we're going to have our first uh, Freedom Festival at the rate that uh, this is growing. Um, so I, I find that to be, I guess, the best best way to really talk about anarchism. I mean, really about anything, right? Um, if you're going to have, if you want to share your ideas, you want to have a conversation, you want to set the tone, you want the environment to be conducive, you want, uh, you know, you don't want to make the other person feel threatened or placed into a corner. You know, people fight hardest for their ideas if you put them in a corner. If you say that you're wrong, you know, yeah. and just instead of saying that, hey, we're all misled. I was born into the matrix too, you know. I voted for Obama in 2008, you know. I thought, you know, at the time, I was a status too, you know, but it's kind of time we all kind of start letting go, right? Uh, it's all, all of us to start letting go of the idea that violence is going to set us free, right? And, um, and to assure you, you know, that I'll never initiate that violence against you, right? Um, I'll give you my word, right? All we have is really our word, right? Our integrity, um, to not compromise that integrity. Uh, and that's that's really, I found that to to be the best way to talk about this stuff. Um, and again, to make it fun, right? So that's what the freedom gatherings are about. We have them every monthly. Next month, we're going to have it at the Zine Fest. Um, so we have our table. We have a workshop introduction to the movement. Um, my sister is making a zine. A zines are pretty much like small little magazines or like little booklets or what. They could be about anything and everything. And um, I don't know. It's uh, I found that to be the best way to just talk about anything, really, um, not to come at people as in a in an aggressive way, right? Not to come at people and say, "Hey, you're an idiot because you don't get it." You know, you're never going to win them over, yeah. right? The end game is freedom, and we're not going to be free until everybody understands. Until everyone starts talking to each other, mm. we're not going to be free until we're all united. Once we're united, once we're the majority, then we can do something. Then we can kill the beast. Right? Then we can, we can use our most powerful weapon, social ostracism. Right? In the end, when we're the majority and the few statists that are left, you, know, you guys have one week, one day, one day to let go. The next day, you're going, all going to be socially ostracized. Where are you going to go? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, invite you to their homes, invite you to their stores. No one's going to smile at you. you know, your internet service provider, your, your phone company will disconnect from you, will break the contract, pay you $150 you know, to break that contract. It's voluntary services. You're living, you can have all the money in the world, but no one's going to sell you anything. 
You just live uh, an o you live in an old empty house for the rest of your life with no TV, no internet. Where are you going to go? Right? And it's not, again, not to say that uh, we want to push people out. Of course, we still want to welcome people back in. You know, if you have um, anger issues, take ma anger management classes, right? The whole, the whole thing. There's always going to be people who want to help the poor. There's always going to be people who ask that question. What about the poor? It implies that they care about the poor, right? I mean, we wouldn't be uh, involved in trading if we knew that, um, you know, there's no other way to get the things that we want. You know, trading is a, it's a, it's a greatest um, example of how we want voluntary interactions with each other, right? Um, I'll trade you, you know, five bucks for that shirt, you know? I don't have to kill you for that shirt, or maybe I'll just go work for those five bucks, and then I'll just, you know, we'll have a trade, you know? We can reason with each other. Uh, we can interact in such a way. Um, but I guess with uh, going back again with agorism, um, we also have to remember that agorism is not just against the government. It's uh, also against any systems of violence. Hang on, so, hang on, hang on. What's agorism? We don't know what agorism is. Oh, so agorism. Okay, so... Um, well, I'll, I'll give you uh, Jillian Batty's definition uh, from Stateless Suites. Uh, we collaborate on uh, for Agorism Day, and I, she was the first person that introduced me, actually, to the word agorism. Uh, she had it on her website. I was like, agorism, what is that? I was like, that's interesting. And I was like, looking it up, it's like, that's pretty cool. I kind of like this. And like, I'm looking around, it's like, I got to jump on board on this. This is, this is fucking awesome. Uh, this is a great... Um, way to appropriate Labor Day. I was trying to think of a of a, a word or something like that, something to counter Labor Day. Um, so, like we have Philosopher's Day instead of Christopher Columbus Day. <laughs> so, agorism by definition just means. Okay, so this is uh, the definition. Agorism is the act of removing oneself from government regulation and monopolized currency. It's the idea that the exchange of products and services can be voluntary transactions and which all parties benefit without the heavy hand of the state reaching into your pockets. The end goal of the agra is to starve the beast by making your productivity unavailable to the system which founds violence, funds violence. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. That's, that's what all agorism. So agorism can be, um, you know, paying someone under the table, you know. Uh, if you own a business, you know, you find this happens a lot like estate fairs. You know, they're not really officially on the payroll because, you know, tax is taken out and all this other stuff. You know, I'll just pay you under the table, right? Uh, different forms of trade, like through Craigslist. Um, now, these days, because we have the Internet, because the government hasn't really found a way to control the Internet yet, uh, we can still do, you know, transactions um, online, you know. Um, different ways to, to, I guess, prevent our productivity, um, from reaching the state, um, you know. So, so the whole purpose of it again is to starve the beast, right? To to starve them of uh, from those resources, to starve them from our productivity. And I, don't know, I guess a good movie that will best explain this would be uh, Lawless, uh, that came out a few weeks ago. Uh, it was it was a uh, screenplay was written by Nick Cave, and uh, music composition was written by also by Nick Cave. It's pretty much a movie that takes place in uh, during Prohibition. You know, you have all the speakeasy lounges, you have all these people coming out there and trying to uh, create their own money, trying to create their own businesses. Like here in uh, Virginia, I think Kent County, like nine out of ten people were all involved in moonshining. Uh, it was a big thriving business. It was a big part of a lot of communities um, around here. And a lot of part of it was, of course, to, you know, even though there's a prohibition going on, you know, to still continue to do this because the market demand for this stuff is shot up. And, of course, this is... Some, you know, you have this artificial inflation, everyone wants to be involved in it. You know, it's, it makes money and um, it's another big fuck you to the state to tell us, you know, what we can't drink whiskey, we can't drink our own liquor. Um, and uh, a lot of forms, I guess, of agorism in that sense. Um, but again, that's why, that's why you wouldn't want to legalize it either. You know, there's, there's two negative effects that comes from legalizing it. You know, people talk about legalizing marijuana. You know, all you're going to do is... Uh, the state will find another way to still get the productivity from that through taxes, through regulations, through licenses, right? They'll find a way to profit from that. Um, so you don't really want to advocate for legalization. You don't even want to advocate for, for making things illegal either, right? The best thing to do is to just get government out of it entirely, right? You can look at Portugal, for example. You can look at the decriminalization of drugs, you know? Um, you know, the rates of uh, drug uses from like heroin to cocaine to marijuana and ecstasy, all of that stuff went down in the first few years when they just decriminalized it. All the, uh, the problems associated with that were gone. 
uh, for the most part, like uh, diseases with shared needles, right? Because they found that it wasn't a war on people. It was a war. I mean, it wasn't a war on drugs. It was a war on people. Um, so like different forms of ways to perform agorism and to do it not to just the state, but in your own community. You know, start asking businesses, hey, what kind of, where, where's your stance on these issues? What values do you have? You know, of course, businesses now, now that they're seeing that they're slowly, that um, having values is slowly become an important part of consumerism, you know, eventually you're going to have to make a stand. Right? Where do you stand on uh, equality? Where do you stand on nonviolence? You now, if businesses want to be like, you know, agnostic about it, they say, oh, you know, I don't want to get involved with politics, but anarchism is not politics. Equality is not politics. That's something you believe. That's something you, you have in here, right? I mean, do you, do you have these values, right? And you put it, you know, of course, there'd be, um, if they say, well, you know, I don't want to get involved, it's like, well, so you lack values? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> it's hard to make a stand on equality. Right? Is it really that hard to be on the fence whether we should all be equal? Is it really hard to be on the fence whether we should have nonviolence? Either you're for it or you're against it. Right? right? Are, are you the kind of person who, who are for, is for spanking children or against it? No, I'd really like to know. <laughs> you know what, where's, where's your stance on that? Where, where does your stance in your business when you promote those values out there, where do they stand? Right? Start questioning the businesses in your community. Start questioning where, where they lie. Because all the other businesses are going to be watching too. All the other businesses right now are looking at Chick Fil A. It's like fuck that. We're going to start pushing values in our, you know, also. Wells Fargo right. doing the same thing. They just put out an ad of like a gay couple, um, like holding hands, you know, coming out of a bank or something like that. So you see, this is starting finally to happen. Right. And all we do now is just keep pushing those values forward. Right. Yeah. Uh, several decades ago, the KKK had millions of members. Today, they just have less than a thousand left. Mm. Right. Uh, it's hard to recruit the youth. It's hard to, uh, to instill those values today. Um, you, you can't plug yourself back into the matrix in that sense. So we have to do, again, a big part of Libera RBA, a big part of this liberation movement is just really to push those values forward, to unite our community, to start talking to each other. Um, you know, the first rule of Liberate RBA is talk about freedom. The second rule is talk about freedom. Uh, that's it. It's a very... It's not a, like it's a, it's a freedom movement that doesn't require permits or camping gear or marching protests. Um, the real battleground is in here, right? In the war of ideas. It's in our mind. Uh, that's where we're plugged in. That's um, it's just the battle for ideas, the battle for philosophy. Give us some action steps, Cal. Like if somebody's listened to this, like what could they do right now or tomorrow, you know, like an action step to, to, to start doing something to promote the message of peace? Give us some ideas. Uh, start part, the best best place to start doing is start finding like-minded people in your community. You know, it takes one person. Try to find that one person, and then uh, encourage that person to find that other person. We all kind of have, like, in our circle or in our lives, we have like at least twelve friends in our lives, or twelve in our. We have like a couple people we can really start talking to. You know, our best friend, you know, our mother, our father, you know, people you can turn to into and say, and um, they will listen to you more. You know, because they're, they value friendship or whatever. You're their son, you're their daughter. Um, those are the people I will start first. And, um, I mean, if everybody starts talking with their own circle of friends, uh, you know, that's kind of how it will spread. Encourage your friends to start talking to other people. I would focus with the people who love you right now. I would focus on the people who love and care for you right now. Those are the people I would want to talk to first. Um, I talked to my mother about voting. Uh, it was a 10-minute conversation. In the end, it's like, you know, would you force her ideas on me? And my mom said, no, I had no idea. So, yeah, I had no idea either. And she said I wasn't voting anymore. So she works for Social Security. So, I mean, that's, she even works for the state. But I didn't say, hey, be an anarchist or anything like that. She came that on her own. You know, a month later, she says, uh, even on Facebook, like, I'm an anarchist. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> so how many people do you think you've converted uh, just using your simple questions. Uh, oh, converted. We can only show people the door, right? We can only start these conversations. Uh, though, if they want to free themselves from the matrix, if they want to come out and say it, that's, that's where we want people to come out, right? Um, I've talked to a lot of people, and I found that to be the best measure of success uh, as it it's been turning out. Um, dozens of people so far, right? And this band, Liberate RBA, has been around for, like, I guess, the 14th of May. And so in a few months, um, again, like, <laughs> like I tell uh, my girlfriend and, and Rachel in the beginning that, um, listen, if this wasn't working, 
if I went out there and started talking to people about this stuff and people, oh my God, was like, fuck you, you know, this is not going to work, you know, you're too idealistic, you know, we're not ready for this. And, all, and that's all the response I got for, you know, for a couple of weeks. I would have turned to say, all right, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought we were ready for this. I thought humanity was ready to evolve, right? I thought, uh, whoa, all right, I'll owe you guys a drink. <laughs> I'll buy you guys a drink at the bar this week. You know, my bad. I'm going to close down the website. Um, who are we voting for next, right? Uh, and that's kind of, I believe, where we are right now. Uh, I believe that's actually what most people have done because it's, uh, they've forgotten how to talk to people about these things. So, of course, they don't feel that anyone's going to listen. Of course, no one's going to listen if you're yelling at them. Of course, no one's going to listen if you're mocking them and insulting them. What do, what do you think they're going to do, right? Of course, they're going to think you're crazy still, right? But, I mean, the approach that you're taking is, is not uh, conducive for, for the environment to exchange those ideas. Um, so, I, I guess uh, this, this, this way of doing this, I feel like to be the fastest way to, to start liberating our community. Um, I mean, exponentially, right? If I could bring in one person a day, like every time I go on campus and I go out there, one person a day, um, five days a week, five weeks a month, that's, you know, that comes up to uh, like 240, I believe. And if each one of those people were to bring in at least one person a month, right, to the Freedom Gardens, to bring in, to talk to, um, and all those people would add up, you know, exponentially, you add up those numbers, it's like that's, that kind of doubles every month. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting, isn't it, you know? And I really like what you're doing, putting on events and the social aspect of it and making it fun and creating a community. And that makes it fun and that, that's that got a gravity to it then, isn't it? You know, as opposed to just intellectual information, as opposed to just reading about stuff online, you know, you're actually making it real in people's lives and then it draws in more people, doesn't it? You have to make it fun. Show them what anarchy looks like, mm -hmm. right? If you're out there stressed and angry all the time and you're talking about anarchy i mean they're going to look at you i mean we're we're visual creatures patient <laughs> is nonverbal, right so of course we're looking of course we're reverse studying of course we're like reading each other and of course if you're coming out there and coming out angry all the time it's like well i don't know if i want anything to do with that looks sounds kind of stressful right it's kind of you know um maybe we'll all be bought i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah sorry uh, Cal, you said that Liberate had spread to Europe, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's going to. I'm talking to some people right now in Europe, uh, talking to, um, yeah, I also got a message recently from uh, this, uh, this, this uh, gentleman from uh, Luxembourg. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's starting. It's, uh, I mean, this is, you Cal, can't really see this, right? I need, I need I to start Liberate Bristol. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't previously occur to me. It seems so obvious now. Now we we're talking about it, but I need to start liberate Bristol. You need to start finding your anarchy team. Um, I'll make you a symbol. I'll make you a symbol today. I'll make the <laughs> Bristol symbol. And I'll give it to you, and uh, you know, you go out there, unite your own community. You know, like Professor X and the X Men, finding who, finding uh, the other you know anarchist team members to the team, and that's a team that will always keep growing. <laughs> That's a team that, 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 that nobody really goes back. You can't unplug yourself from the matrix. I mean, once you unplug yourself, you can't plug yourself back. So that's the team I want to be a part of. It's time for us to create our superhero team. And we can have a superhero team that starts off like with two people and then with a dozen. And then we have 50 and then 100. And that just continues to grow and grow and grow. Um, and that's, that's the only way we'll have it in our lifetime. That is the only way we can have it in our lifetime. You know, to, to socially ostracize the state, to, to empower each other, to unite each other. You know, um, that is the only way we're going to end statism in our lifetime. Yeah. And uh, and we can't do this alone. You know, I can't do this alone. Uh, you can't do this alone. Stefan Malin, you can't do this alone. No one can do this alone. It's only when we're together. It's only when we're united. It's only when we all draw that moral line together. Yeah. Then we can finally throw that, you know, ring of politics and statism into like Mount Doom together. Right. And just let go of it once and for all. And we're done. After that, I don't know. After that, it doesn't matter. Right doesn't matter what happens after slavery ends. It doesn't matter what happens after statism ends. What matters is that it ends. What matters is that we finally free ourselves. You know? I, I want to be free. Um, I want my, my children to be free, you know, when they're born. I don't want them to be born into uh, social security cages, you know, bonded into culture, bonded into uh, Medicare and Medicaid and all these other forced monopolized services that they're now forced to not only to accept their terms and conditions, but they're forced to fund them. Right, uh, it's I don't know. It's time of time to stop uh, waiting around. Like Stefan says, it's time to be the winds of change. Mm. 
and uh, we can't do this. I mean, we we can do a lot of different ways to do it. I mean, that's that's why this movement, you know, pretty much supports and encourages individuality, encourages. Uh, so I mean, I have my anarchy armband, but you can design your own anarchy armband. You can use like the the gold and uh, black letters. You know, you can use you can do anything like that, right? You can. Um, there's room for creativity. There's room for individuality, as long as we're not violating the non-aggression principle. As long as we're not advocating for murder, theft, assault, you can do anything. You can find different ways. You can find a way to talk to people that, um, you know, that works for you, right? In the same way, like uh, as a business plan, you want to market the message to the to the people that you're you're talking to. Find a way to connect to people. Find a way to connect with all the other subgroups, um, all the other subcultures out there, right? Market your product. Market freedom to those people. Cal, you know what? I, th there's something kind of exponential about the way you're doing things. And it sounds so simple, you know, when you talk about it, it just seems obvious, you know, to get people together and wake people up one by one. And it just sounds so simple. But there's something exponential about that, as opposed to just other forms of activism that are kind of linear. You know, they just, you know, do you, do you understand? I'm kind of struggling to find the words here, but do you know what I mean? I understand. Yeah. Um, and let's that's, that's not focus so much on set times and dates for like protests and stuff like that. I mean, well. We do demonstrations. We're we're freedom uh, activists. We're not freedom demonstrators. We're not freedom protesters. I mean, we're not we don't we're not protesters. Protesting implies concessions. It implies compromises and deals. Uh, civil disobedience acknowledges the state to be your parents. The state is not our parents. You know, you only do that to, to your parents when you're kids. You know, you only kind of you know stops talking back. You know, you do civil disobedience to your parents, right? To do that to the state acknowledges that they are your parents. And though this is about not acknowledging them at all. To socially start ostracizing the state, like we did with the KKK. Eventually, they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then all of a sudden, in that transition, right? We're not saying I want the state to end tomorrow, but I'm saying through that transition, we can finally end the state. And then eventually, we're already living anarchism. We already do it in our day-to-day -day lives. We do not use violence to solve problems in our day-to-day -day lives. We already practice anarchism. All we have to do now is to spread that philosophy. We need a philosophical revolution, right? A cultural revolution, a nonviolent revolution, and that's the best way to get everyone on board. Parents can be involved in them too, because they don't have to risk being in jail, you know. And their children have to wait for them. You know, how much freedom can you speak when you're in a jail, right? How many conversations can you have? I'm sure you can have with other inmates, but you're not really out there reaching. That's the full potential. Well, we'll save them in the end. In the end, we'll, we'll free them from those cages. But right now, it's more important that we start talking to each other about this. Free their minds, right? Help them. Help, help free them from the matrix. Create that team. Keep growing that team. And eventually they'll do the same. Encourage them to talk to other people. And it'll just grow from there. It'll just grow from there. Cal, how many Liberate groups are there now since you started Liberate RVA? Uh, all right, so there's um, Javier and uh, Liberate Rochester. They just had their first Freedom Gathering last Friday. Uh, <laughs> our people, very well-read people. Um, we're going to have a little video chat discussion later after the show, uh, like on all us together, on a, you know, like, I guess, like the Brady Bunch, different faces. Oh, what? Uh, you're doing like a conference call with the other groups, are you? All their tactics, their strategy, uh, you know, things like that. Wow. Uh, there's, hey, uh, Harold, Cal, sorry, sorry to stop you, but, you know, there's going to be people listening to this, you know, from all different states all over the world, and they're going to be excited by this what you're doing and you liberate things so can they contact you and kind of like notify you that they're creating their own regional group and then you put it on the website or something like so on the website if you go to liberate uh you'll find a tab that says anarchists assemble <laughs> you know avengers assemble right anarchists assemble uh, and on there you'll find the uh where the other liberate movements are right now on there you'll find the liberate um Rochester, New York, the Liberate Delo uh, Newcastle and Delaware, Liberate Rally in North Carolina, Liberate Bemidji in Minnesota, and that, that's already starting to grow. And we have uh, our, you know, our non-political uh, and independent supporters there too, you know, the, the agorist businesses, you know, the ones who also have these values, right? This is an anarcho-capitalist movement, right? This is a freedom movement. Um, so you have those supporters there too. And um, so, yeah, you'll find all the information there. And if you want the symbol, too, if you want uh, me to, you know, again, to tailor the symbol to you, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly make it for you. Um, and to protect the symbol, right? There's only one message. This is uh, a freedom movement that anyone can be a part of if you value the non-aggression principle, right?
that's, that's all you need to do. Value the non-aggression principle, and you can have it. That's it. It's not, um, there's no, uh, there's nothing to it. Um, so that's, uh, it's, yeah, so everything's, everything's on the website. You'll find everything on the website. You'll find, uh, I guess, you also find the, the freedom petition. There's a freedom petition where a lot of people all over the world already started to sign. It's pretty much to say to, to everyone that, uh, you know, this is, I'm signing mine. I guess it's kind of like our declaration of independence sort of thing or co-opting of it. You know, this is my signature. This is my name. I will not use violence. I have the integrity to go all the way. Fuck voting and pretty much to kind of sign it off, you know, because the government says, you know, this is a list of people that don't vote. They're very apathetic. No, this is a list of people who do care and actually are doing something about it. You know, we're not pushing it off every four years. That's apathetic, you know. Um, so, yeah, everything, everything you'll find on the website and it's continuing to grow. You know, we want to keep refining it. We want to keep uh, making it better. We already have like um, so with the other liberation group movements, we have uh, like an anarcho capitalist competition. Let's see which one can liberate our own community first. Um, so that's it's, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's there's there's I don't know there's no I haven't really experienced any stress at all in this. I mean it's again a revolution of convenience when you have a moment when you have an hour right, um, and of course when a lot more people are involved, they all will have like an hour at least in one week to do something about it, and all those hours will add up. You know they'll accumulate, um, especially when you have like hundreds of people doing it at the same time. Right, you don't have to do it yourself anymore. Again, one person can't do it alone. You know what, Cal? What I want to do is end on a high right here. I want to end right now and encourage people to come to your website, read on the website, and, and get involved and whatever they got to do, like contact you or whatever, or get the ball rolling. I don't know what. Get the ball rolling. I want to just encourage people to just get involved with this right now and, you know, let's make this happen. Let's end on a high. Oh no! I'll, I'll make your symbol tonight. I'll make your symbol tonight, and then at the end, we'll let me. We'll have the biggest celebration ever. In the end, we'll have victory party. That's going to be our holiday, victory party. In the end, we'll all celebrate together. In the end, it'll be like in Star Wars, where everyone all over the world is celebrating. You know, free. You know, uh, other countries. You know, you have to start at home in your own community. That freedom movement will spread into those countries. You know, do it in your own community first, and that'll spread from there. <laughs> and you've got Facebook pages and the events are listed on the Facebook events and stuff on the page and all that type of thing so people can just come and find you and they, they, it's all online and yes <laughs> how exciting all right you know what I think we'll wrap up there unless you've got any final comments is there something you want to finish on there oh, well there's Philosopher's Day again Philosopher's Day is on the second Monday of October okay. um, doing non-aggression day that's on the 11th of November it's pretty much um, appropriating uh, Veterans Day Okay. So, non aggression day. Is there any kind of AV? Is there any kind of um, remote, uh, co uh, like uh, live stream? Like, can people tune in to what you're doing if they're in a different location? Have you got anything like that going on yet? That's a good suggestion, but I, I think actually I have a lot of ideas I'm sort of putting in there. So, I mean, I mean, this we need critiques, we need ideas, we need to start collaborating on this sort of stuff, we need to start organizing, we need to start having our meetings, um, live streaming is good, um, like I want to have like every Sunday, you know, I'll talk to anyone you know, who wants to talk, you know, anywhere all over the world, I'm on Skype, you can find me on Renegade Boy Scout, um, SCT abbreviated, uh, you know, I'm, I'll talk to anyone who really wants to listen, really, I mean, it's not just for me anymore, right, it's for my family, it's for my friends, my brother, Oliver, he's in uh, university right now, so I can't wait until he finally gets caught if he ever experiments to be dehumanized, you know, um, you know, right, right now, where we still have this moment, right now, where we still have the internet before they take that away from us, you know, this is the only moment we're going to have to actually start doing this, mm -hmm. um, time to stop uh, sitting around behind our computers all day, it's time for all of us to start going out there, to start talking about this, to start spreading philosophy, spreading real anarchism, you know, mm -hmm. Um, and that's the only way we're going to be free. And that's the only way we're going to free our brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know? Okay. So there's going to be conference calls that you're going to be doing. People can get online and chat to you. I, I, and it, there might be people listening to this that feel that they want to support you with admin type of stuff. They might want to get involved and so they can contact you and, you know, they could really help you kind of, you know, get, you know, implement this stuff. So who knows? <laughs> the ball's rolling, right? Everyone's important. Every single person's important. We need all the skills. We need all those talents. We need um, we need every different way we can promote this message, yeah. right? We are our own media. All right, Cal. Let's wrap up there, and uh, we'll speak soon. And keep us updated about the events. And you know, we'll we'll speak sometime soon and do another update. You know, maybe in a couple of months or so. 
No, this has been this has been so great. I'm so glad I'm on here again. This, this is awesome. This has been this has been a real pleasure. This has been a real pleasure, Ben. Likewise, uh, likewise. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll catch you soon, Carl. Take care. Take care, my friend. Bye for now.